Hello everyone, my name is Vince Aguirre. I'm here to present to you uh, Facebook marketing for small business. Now, before we get started, a little bit more about who I am. Uh, I'm the president of Distinct. Uh, Distinct was founded in 2013, based in Greencastle. Uh, we have a team of four Hoosiers and an international team as well. Uh, I'm a father, I'm a husband, uh, next week, I'll be able to say I have my master's in business administration, and sometimes I'm relish. And uh, what you're going to learn today is, is I like to have fun. So sometimes I'm relish, uh, but only when my son is a hot dog. I am a Chicago native, and in Chicago, we do not put ketchup on hot dogs. So you will see that we found a hot dog costume with no ketchup. And this is my wife, Shelby, who is our, our mustard. So what is Distinct? Uh, Distinct is a team of people who provide unlimited website support to busy leaders like you. Uh, this is our team. Like I said, we have four Hoosiers. You'll see us right there in the middle. And then we have an international team as well that handles our web design, graphic design, and additional services. Uh, this team... Uh, has grown over the years, and through the assistance of um, the state of Indiana, uh, we, we received some incentives to hire more Hoosiers this year and continue to grow our team. So let's jump in and talk about uh, Facebook marketing, what you can be doing uh, to increase your presence on social media and to be effective. And to me, I feel that you can find a million people saying a million different things. And what I wanted to do today is keep things simple, leave lots of time for discussion, give you some actionable things that you can start doing today and even uh, implement some tools. Uh, so there's some tools at the end that you can check out and hopefully add to your tool belt to be a successful business owner. The first thing I want to say is stop acting like a business. And you're probably thinking, well, we are, we are businesses. What do you mean stop acting like a business? And I'm going to show you an example. But at my core, what I mean by this is to stop thinking of yourself uh, and putting limitations of a business around your business marketing. Uh, people don't engage and connect and build relationships with a brand. Um, especially if that brand is not uh, being authentic and, and, and fun and, and worth their time. So what I'm going to show you is an example of a corporation, Meyer, uh, and two of their posts. Uh, the post on the left, 43 engagements, one share. The post on the right, 711 engagements, 178 shares. Now, I would ask for your opinion on why, what you think is the difference between these two. But I'll go ahead and I'll jump in. On the left, there's a few things we want to look at. One, the image. Sunscreen. Kind of boring. I mean, maybe the colors catch your eye, but, you know, it, it's sunscreen. It's a necessary thing that we do to make sure we don't burn ourselves in the summer. Uh, for some of you in the winter. Uh, but if you look at the text, uh, you know, the, the most important part of everyone's summer beauty ritual, sunscreen, and there's a link. It's not exciting. It's very promotional. I'm sure when you click on that link, it's going to sell you sunscreen. Uh, why would people engage with that? No one that I've ever met goes, I love sunscreen. Look at this. This is great. Now on the right, Summertime fun, circa 1973, sand and sunshine, grills and tank tops. Throwback Thursday, TBT. Uh, you know, this is engaging. This is a, a flashback um, for people who were alive at that time. Maybe they remember ads like this and they feel, um, you know, they feel a connection to this and a nostalgia. To those who weren't alive or were too young, uh, you know, maybe it's just unique and people are interested in, you know, what is this? Interested in in the price and the price difference. Uh, you know, a $5 grill. 
$18 thermos. You know, when you look at a, a Yeti cooler now, it's a hundred and something dollars. This is engaging to people. Um, it, it, you, you can see based on the reactions that people had a moment to pause and, and really think about this. So when I'm saying I'm acting like a business, I'm just promoting, share something, be engaging, uh, share something fun. Uh, we'll talk later about sharing vulnerability. Uh, there's there's lots of ways that you can think outside of the box and not just sharing your product. You, the last thing you should be doing is sharing your product. On social media, you want to build the relationship. People will find the product, and sometimes you'll post the product, but you want to build the relationship. I want you to plan ahead, but also live in the moment. And again, like Vince, what does that mean? Planning ahead is a little more straightforward. I want you to look a week, a month, a quarter ahead and plan what you're going to post. Um, sometimes you can schedule those ahead of time and I'll show you some ways to do that. Or you can create them ahead of time and post them in the moment. There's a lot of ways to go about that. But most importantly, I want you to think about it. I want you to think about what you're posting in January, in February, in March. And do as much of the work ahead of time as you can and do it in one sitting or multiple sittings. But thinking every Monday about what you're posting for the week or every morning about what you're posting for the day is not going to help you. So plan ahead, schedule as much as you can, but then also live in the moment. And by living in the moment, I mean be real about what you're doing, what you're doing right now. Uh, if you visit a client or a vendor, or you run into a customer on the street, create content. And don't worry about it being polished and pretty. Don't worry about it being impressive. Just be real. Be authentic and live in the moment. So fill in those gaps that you didn't plan for. And sometimes even you did plan for, but you're having a moment on that day. And post in the moment. Building a community is more important than ever. Let's be honest. Most people hate Facebook. Even if you're on Facebook yesterday, this morning, uh, all weekend, you hated it. And I don't know anyone who would disagree with that. And if you do disagree, raise your hand. Go ahead. Uh, let's talk about it. But you, Facebook's a necessary evil. It's a way to connect. It's a way to promote your business. Uh, it's a way to find things and find communities. And people are leaning into Facebook more and more for communities because their newsfeed is full of stuff, stuff they don't want to see, stuff they agree with, stuff they disagree with, stuff that their friends agree with and disagree with that makes them mad. Uh, Facebook raises your blood pressure, but communities are like-minded people that you're trying to connect with. And that's why Facebook is emphasizing communities. Since the 2016 election, it's changed uh, its focus to, sh to shift into communities and groups. Um, you can find articles all over the internet that are really showing that, that Facebook groups are the future. And it, it's, it's really easy when you sit back and look, um, look how many groups you're a part of that you don't even think you're a part of and what you're engaging in. Um, sure, you're still sharing baby pictures or looking at pictures of your, your kids or grandkids, but what we're really doing is, is finding communities and the groups page is enabling that. Uh, we have a group at Distinct that uh, I'm going to shamelessly promote. Uh, the Small Business Squad is connecting and supporting and growing small businesses across the world with a focus on West Central Indiana. Uh, you can scan this QR code or go on Facebook and look for the Small Business Squad to join our community. Uh, we don't promote ourselves in the community, but we do prompt our members to talk about themselves, their struggles, uh, their successes, their plans, their goals, their hopes, their dreams, uh, and we build that community there. And sometimes community members come to us for website support. Sometimes they don't. Uh, but we foster relationships in the small business squad. So my assignment to you, if you're hearing this right now, is to go ahead and create a Facebook group. 
you can make it a niche group within your industry. You can make it outside of your industry. Um, create something that you're going to be passionate about. Uh, for example, if you are a dog salon, create a group about your love for golden doodles, a golden doodle haircut group and grow that group, engage in that group. Uh, if you are a business focusing on business to business sales, much like us, create something that supports business owners or engages business owners. Maybe you love to run, create a jogging group for business owners. That's fine. It'll connect to your business. It'll naturally grow your audience and connect. I'm going to pause to give everyone a chance to scan the QR code and join the small business squad. You've heard me talk about being authentic. Be real. Being real equals engagement. Engagement equals results. Uh, so take some time. Create a video or a post. Take a picture of what you do in your business or how you do it. Uh, you have to remember that you're an expert in your business, but not everyone is, right? Uh, you'd be amazed on TikTok, on Facebook and Instagram reels and stories, how much people want to engage in your daily life. If you are a mechanic, changing the oil is another day at work for you. However, if you have a fun trick on how you save time changing oil, other people might find that trick and be engaged with it. Make sure you're not taking for granted the skills and techniques that you use in your business and feel free to share them. Share your struggles along with your wins. Businesses have a tendency to only share the good stuff. Yay, we got a big client. Yay, we received this grant. Yay, we have a new business uh, storefront, brick and mortar shop, new website, whatever that is. Um, share some struggles and be authentic. Uh, you know, you don't have to share all your struggles, but share something that people can connect with, you know. Uh, internet went out Monday morning while we're running payroll. Uh, you know, uh, luckily we had a business next door that let us use their internet. You know, be engaging and share some of those struggles and people will relate to that. Um, don't overthink it. Don't feel like you have to plan for hours to make a 20 second video. Just, just film it um, and don't force it. You know, if, you, if you're not feeling it, don't don't force it. Don't force a post. Don't force a picture. Don't force yourself to get on camera. Uh, but try, but don't force it. Uh, what I'll show you here in a second is a couple of videos I made with some very light editing. Um, we use Canva uh, for video editing, and I'll talk a little bit more about Canva. And I have a free trial to offer here in a minute. But uh, I want to show you uh, these three videos real quick just to show how simple it can be. These videos are on TikTok, uh, but you can do this on Facebook. You can do this on Instagram. Do it on any platform. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you what a call to action is on your website. I'm gonna show you a good example and an example that needs improvement. Once you're done checking out my examples, go to your own website and see how you can improve your call to action. Call to action is to partner with us to move families beyond homelessness. Very clear, very engaging. Now, one call to action that isn't as clear is hidden in the menu on mobile. Now, you see the nice contrasting colors to donate, but you only see it if you get to the mobile menu. So what we're doing is we're going to be moving that as a call to action before the mobile menu. So there'll be two clear call to actions, to help someone move beyond homelessness and to donate. All right, you made it this far in the video, so hopefully you gathered some new information that can help you with your website. Put in the comments what you're going to do to change your website now. here at the Detroit airport and behind me is a parallel reality. Only I can see that screen based on where I am standing. It shows my info and my name only. It was pretty loud there so I want to step aside to finish. Uh, the, the screen is really cool. It tracks you and your movement and only shows you your information privately. 
I tested it with my wife and we, we kind of walked really close to each other and we had to be literally on top of each other to see each other's information. Uh, so I'll post a link to learn more about this video, but I think it's really cool and just another way that technology is going to be changing in the future. Uh, so stay tuned. Let's talk about bounce rate and page speed. Bounce rate of your website is the percentage of people who leave your website without taking a second action. That could be linking to a second page, playing a video, uh, browsing your blog, any second action. Google has shown that if your site takes three seconds to load, your visitors are 32% more likely to bounce. If your page takes five seconds to load, they're 90% more likely to bounce. In 10 seconds to load, they're 123% more likely to bounce. If your website's loading slow, your customers are going to leave. Think about what you do on slow websites. Now that you know this, go ahead and test your page speed using some of the resources I'm gonna put right here. If your website's running too slow, go ahead and reach out to us. We'll be happy to help you. The last thing I wanna talk with you about is using your resources. Uh, I'm going to show you four resources that we use at Distinct, and I heavily suggest you check them out. Uh, the first one is Canva. Uh, you may know of Canva. A lot of people use Canva for social media, for creating graphics. Um, now for video, it's really becoming a comprehensive suite for businesses. Um, I recommend using Canva specifically for social media posts and video editing. It makes it very easy to spend a couple minutes editing a video. It also makes it really easy to uh, schedule your posts. You can integrate with your social media tools and create a content calendar for you. There's going to be some overlap in some of the tools I share with you uh, because uh, you know they all have different elements of scheduling and creation. But I like Canva. Canva integrates with another tool I'll show you later for scheduling posts. Uh, and I, I prefer that tool for the analytics and the engagement aspects, but Canva is a great resource for creating your content. Video, stock videos, stock images, easy editing, uh, really suggest Canva. And in a minute, I'll give you a QR code so that you can take advantage of a free trial. The next is Jasper. Jasper can help you write engaging content. For example, I was sweating bullets as I put the finishing touches on my presentation. I had to give a talk on Wednesday, but it was only Monday, and I still hadn't written a single word. Then it hit me. I could use Jasper to help me with the copywriting. I typed in a few keywords, and Jasper got to work. In no time at all, she had generated the perfect slideshow for me. And not only that, but she also gave me a few minutes to take a drink of water and stop talking. Thanks, Jasper. I'll play for you now a video. This paragraph just alluded to the opportunity for me to drink some water and stop talking. So this is Jasper uh, behind the scenes as I go through and try to select a template uh, to use for this example. Uh, you'll see a lot of template options here. Uh, what I ended up settling on is the story template. And here is my prompt. I'm, so I'm typing my prompt into Jasper. And I say, uh, Vince is struggling to write content for his presentation. It's Monday, and he meets with the group on Wednesday, but he's just now starting to create a slideshow. Suddenly, he realizes he can use Jasper to impress his audience with AI copywriting, which also gives him a few minutes to take a drink of water and stop talking. Uh, here I am uh, selecting a tone of voice. Uh, the first attempt, I'm using Chris Rock as my tone of voice. So um, you'll see some of the text that's generated. Uh, hey, y'all, let me introduce you to Jasper. Um, I started reading these. I didn't like that tone of voice. So I went back and just changed the tone of voice to first person. Uh, here you'll see the top prompt uh, is verbatim what I just read to you. Um, I did not edit that. Uh, you see I copy that prompt, and I'm using that now. So in that video, you just saw me create this text verbatim. I didn't edit it, although I probably would prefer to edit the, the word only before Monday and get rid of that. But I gave a prompt and it wrote the engaging text for me. I can use this on Facebook, 
can use this on a blog. Uh, Jasper can take any content, anything out of your mind in rough sentences and create engaging content. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. I could go on for hours about Jasper. Jasper can write blog posts, can write ad headlines, press release, video titles. Um, you really got to check out Jasper if you struggle with writing or you find yourself staring at the screen and not knowing how to write the things you're thinking. So again, um, I have a free trial uh, in a minute for QR code for Jasper. Zoho Social is a resource we use for all of our social media scheduling. It allows you to integrate with Canva to take your designs, to schedule them out on different platforms at different times. It tells you when to schedule them. It allows you to comment on people, uh, posts that people have commented. You can respond and engage. Uh, the list goes on. We love Zoho Social. We use it for all of our scheduling needs. Um, we use Zoho. Zoho is a suite of tools. Um, we use Zoho for everything. Our project management, our help desk, our CRM, our, our, the list goes on, but we really love it for Zoho Social as well. Um, so again, check out the QR code for Zoho Social. Missing letter is really interesting. Um, it takes a lot of the work off of your plate for distributing your content and for finding new content if you want to redistribute other people's content. What you do is you plug in your blog post or another feed that you're creating content on, even YouTube videos. It pulls them in and then it sets up a schedule where it'll post your content for up to a year and distribute those posts uh, in a good cadence. So for example, if I create this video and I put this video on YouTube, it will take the video, scan it, set up a schedule. Maybe uh, it'll post this video once this week, once in three weeks, once in one month, once in four months, once in six months, and it does it all for you, schedules it all out. You can make tweaks, add comments. It's really powerful with a blog post. It can take the whole blog post and schedule it for you in minutes. You can schedule a whole year's worth of content in a couple of hours. So this is a really good tool for that planning ahead that we talked about and for creating content that um, is engaging and, and repurposed. Uh, there's a term called evergreen content. This is really good for content that doesn't get old. Um, this isn't great for content that's, that's relevant in this moment, right? Um, a Christmas special, not good for that. Uh, but here's how we trim... Uh, if you're, if you're a, a, a dog salon, here's how we trim, uh, golden doodles hair. Um, that's, you know, that probably won't change much over the next year. Uh, really good evergreen content that you can keep sharing. As promised, here are some resources. You can scan these to get free trials for all these tools. But I think the best resource is me being here to answer your questions so go ahead, leave some comments in the chat or reach out to me at becomedistinct.com or by scanning this QR code. Thank you very much. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. I'm looking forward to working with you in the future.